business success and a record of contribution within their community. I'll be reading these in alphabetical order for the Emerging Business Women of the Year. Teresa Cruz, owner of Made Easy Cleaning Service. This nominee basis for the Nominee bases her business on compassion. Teresa Cruz, owner of Made Easy Cleaning Service, was motivated to start her business when she learned that unknown toxins in cleaning products could cause serious health issues. So she uses only non-toxic products for both her commercial and residential jobs. That helps her get the job initially, and the quality of her service and staff builds her Ricky business. But earnings aren't her sole motivation or measurement of success. Her ultimate goal is to help others. Her generosity extends to her clients by giving discounted services to disabled, elderly, and veterans, and she employs people from the inner city. She leads by example, she works hard, does quality work, motivates her staff, and she cares about others. Congratulations. <laughs> Kelly Gillian, owner of Plume. wanted to give stay-at-home parents a physical place where they could sell their homemade <coughs> items. So she opened Plume, which now provides retail space to over 65 local makers and vintage enthusiasts. But these small entrepreneurs get more than just retail space. Kelly has helped many of them create a brand, build a retail strategy, and test the marketplace. While mentoring those, these local makers, Plume has attracted a strong retail following. She takes pride in all many success stories she has fostered, Another way she helps people cope is through a group called Graceful Weight that she established at her church, The Crossing, for those struggling with infertility. When this nominee sees a need, she seeks a solution. Congratulations. <laughs> Danielle Harrison, Assistant Vice President, Commercial Lending and Banking. Danielle Harrison is a doer. She's been self-motivated to achieve and do her best since grade school. That trait pushes her to do her best in and out of the office. She joined Landmark Bank in 2015 as a commercial loan officer. That first year, she doubled her initial loan portfolio and close to triple and close to tripled it in her second year. Earlier this year, she was promoted to assistant vice president. When not assisting customers, Danielle can be found in the community volunteering her time. Danielle volunteering her time, often in a leadership role. She's active in Rotaract, United Way, and serves on the board of Mobility Worldwide, just to name a few. This nominee brings drive and determination to everything she does. <laughs> Mackenzie Neerum, owner of the Southern Rose. since high school. So she's always coming up with new ideas. While working at Veterans United Home Loans, she started an online business specializing in monograms. After meeting her current business partner, Nicole Morris, they decided to open their own monogram and gift boutique called The Southern Rose, where the monogram and embroidery baby and wedding items and apparel and home decor. After opening the store, Mackenzie helped found the organization for businesses in the South area of Columbia called Como South. When not at the store, she coaches softball. It's clear that this nominee isn't afraid to try new things. Congratulations, Mackenzie. Now, Kristen, I hope I say your name correctly. Kristen Newswender? Did I get it right? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> as indicated by her studies in MEO. She graduated with a degree in Parks and Recreation and with both a minor in Business and Music. After graduation, she joined the News, Press, and Gazette Company, the media group that owns KMIZ and its sister stations. She was promoted to local sales manager of ABC 17 and MeTV in 2017. Last February, she launched her own business, Gathering Company Events, for 2018. And, and 20, excuse me, and, 
She started her company, uh, Gather a Company and Events, and is fully booked through May 2017 and already has many bookings for 2018. In between her business obligations, she volunteers for Women's Network, Coyote Hill, the Crossing Music Team. Christian believes that variety is the spice of life and channels it successfully into her career pursuits. Congratulations. uses her professional talents to provide shelter for those in need. As Director of Housing Programs for Columbia Housing Authority, she oversees the public housing in Section 8, housing choice voucher programs for 1,900 households. To better serve those low-income families, she successfully restructured internal workflows and strengthened their checks and balances to ensure proper caseload management. She offers guidance and support to her staff through training, mentoring, and leading by example. She also works with other community organizations serving low-income households, so her staff can connect people with other supportive services. Andrea has the respect of her coworkers, the community, and those she serves. Congratulations. And our final nominee in this category is Katie Wagner, owner, agent, 573 North Carolina. She sold over $3 million in properties and won Rookie of the Quarter at Remax Boone Realty. In her second year, she sold over $5 million and won the prestigious 100% Club Award. This year, Katie established the 573 Home Team, brought in a business partner, and joined forces with Columbia Real Estate. To date, she and her partner have already exceeded $6.5 million in sales. Katie is not only a good businesswoman, but is also generous. She started the 573 Gives Back program in which a percentage of every commission check she gets is donated to a local charity of her client's choice. Congratulations, Kate. contributions to a business, organization, or profession, and have displayed a commitment to their community. I'll be reading that nominees in alphabetical order again. Victoria Breeze, former Vice President of Chamber of Operations, Columbia Chamber of Commerce, now with the Small Business and Business Services Department at the Landmark Bank. Since graduating from MU in 1999, Victoria Breeze has been a champion of business as a member of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce team. Over the years, her job title and responsibilities have changed, but her dedication to the betterment of Columbia's business climate has not. Most recently, she played a key role in the Chamber's reaccreditation process that resulted in the Chamber going from a four-star to a five-star Chamber of Commerce. Victoria's time away from the office is spent with family, going to Mizzou football games, and being involved with the Metro Rotary Club and Beta Sigma Phi. As of yesterday, she became an employee of Landmark Bank, where she will continue working with businesses and the bank's business services and businesses support departments. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie Friedrichs, Director, Missouri Women's Business. It wasn't long into her first job at Woodhaven that Jamie Friedrichs became devoted to nonprofit organizations. Recently, she was named the first director of the Missouri Women's Business Center, part of the Central Missouri Community Action. Her goal is to provide a strong support system for businesswomen and to make the program a catalyst for economic development in our community. 
in addition to having her master's in public affairs, she went back for extra training to be a certified launch and facilitator so she can coach clients on business development. In her spare time, she and her husband run a documentary production company. She's a member of the Chamber and Women's Network and still volunteers at Woodhaven. Jamie understands business and works to help other women achieve in business. Congratulations. Cindy Frisbee, University of Missouri School of Journalism professor. Cindy Frisbee has mastered the art of motivating others. <laughs> She's been an associate professor at MU School of Journalism for about 19 years and was recently promoted to a full-time professional position. As a teacher, she's won several accolades, including being honored by the William T. Kemper Fellowship and being named by student athletes as an outstanding teacher. That's an accomplishment, but I would say yes. As a researcher, she's worked on several nationally recognized research projects, learning how health organizations can reach underserved populations and why people are fascinated by reality TV. As a speaker, she's considered a spokesperson on issues dealing with race, gender, the media, and achieving one's dreams. In each of these roles, Cindy positively influences those around her. Congratulations. <laughs> Lindsay Yan Lopez, Executive Director of the Food Bank. <laughs> Lindsay Yan Lopez has been serving others in the nonprofit sector for two decades but feels that she finally found her calling as the executive director of the Food Bank of Central and Northeast Missouri. Same-o, same-o is not Lindsay's motto. She thinks out of the box to provide the best nutritional food she can to needy families. To increase the amount of fresh produce, protein, and dairy being distributed, she has worked to form partnerships with local growers and businesses and increase the number of refrigerated mobile pantries to deliver fresh food to needy areas. Also through her efforts, gifts and in-kind donations have increased and more schools participate in the Buddy Pack program. Beyond the food bank, Lindsay is involved with the Chamber and is a former board member of Trips Institute. She helps improve the quality of life in our community and everything she does. Congratulations. <laughs> Mitzi St. John, Public Relations Manager, Daniel Boone Regional Library. Mitzi, Mitzi St. John has been helping local organizations tell their stories since the early 1980s. For 22 years, she was a partner in the Hannah Stanley St. John Ad Agency, <coughs> applying her creative skills to help area businesses define and attain their marketing goals. For the past seven years, she has served as public relations manager at Daniel Boone Regional Library, helping shine a spotlight on the importance of that local resource and good work of the library staff. Mitzi has redesigned and improved the library's newsletter, co-directed the development and implementation of the library's new digital branch, and coordinated efforts to begin development of a new strategic plan. Mitzi also has used her marketing and advertising talents to benefit the community, providing services to Boone County Historical Society, the Central Missouri Humane Society, and PACE, Children's Theater Group, among others. Something you may not know about Mitzi, she holds a black belt in karate. <laughs> so watch out, right? Congratulations, Mitzi. And our final nominee is Terry Trickle, business manager, Simon Oswald Architecture. You could refer to Terry Trickle as a bean counter, but she's much more than that. She's worked in accounting, supervisory, and management positions since 1987. She joined Simon Oswald Architecture in 2011 as their business manager. In that position, she creates, analyzes, and prepares financial statements, reviews project costs, and manages many personnel details. To some, her biggest accomplishment is the implementation of enterprise resource planning systems, a system that optimizes business practices. Through her job, she's committed to helping others, She's involved with United Way's Day of Caring, helping Simon Oswell achieve pay setter status for several years, and sits on the membership committee of the chamber. In a nutshell, her coworkers describe her as highly efficient, smart, and of good character. Congratulations.
Our third group of finalists today are nominated for the Business Woman of the Year, which recognizes women who have been in their business or field for five years or more, who are in a key position affecting the growth and profitability of their business, and have a record of business success and a record of contribution within their community. Finalists, please come forward as we introduce you. Gigi McElrady, owner of McElrady's Company. Gigi McElrady started learning about real estate at the dinner table from her dad who owned a real estate agency. She got a real estate license at age 18 and worked as a realtor and at an appraiser's office before opening Mac Appraisal Company in 2003. Located in Boonville, she and two other employees cover central Missouri. Being her own boss gave her flexibility she wanted to raise her three daughters and to volunteer in the community. She served on the Saints Peter and Paul School Board for 10 years and helped guide its multi-purpose building project. She also coached basketball and soccer teams at the local YMCA and is past chairperson of the Boonville Blast. Throughout her career, Gigi feels that she successfully balanced work and family. Congratulations. <laughs> Elizabeth Mendenhall, CEO, Remax Boone Realty. <laughs> Elizabeth Mendenhall, I don't believe Elizabeth was able to join us today because she is out of town. Um, she took over her family's sixth generation real estate business in 1996. As a broker and CEO of Remax Boone Realty and a realtor for the past 21 years, she continued to grow the firm that now employs 50% more people than in 1996. She has overseen 35,000 real estate transactions, oh my gosh, it's a ton, and shares her extensive knowledge when training new agents and mentoring seasoned ones. Over the years, Elizabeth has taken on several leadership roles in professional organizations and has won several awards in her industry. She has also been a community leader like when she founded the Bend, Missouri affiliate Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation and raised millions for the organization. Her leadership skills have been benefited, have benefited her company and our community. Congratulations, Elizabeth. <laughs> Dr. Arminta Phelps, owner and chief balance chiropractic. Dr. Phelps is an ardent advocate of health and wellness. The mission statement for her business, Achieve Balance Chiropractic, is to measurably make Columbia the healthiest and happiest in the Midwest. She opened her doors in 2008 and is continuously adding new services. She now employs a team of six, including an associate doctor. Last year, Dr. Phelps' practice grew more than 28%. In addition to taking care of her patients, she teaches free classes on health and wellness in her office and out in the community. She's even met patients at the grocery store to give them nutritional guidance. She also gives generously to numerous organizations dedicated to the betterment of our community. Dr. Phelps works to improve our quality of life everywhere she goes. Congratulations. <laughs> Catherine Rhodes, owner of Catherine Rhodes Photography. photography and portrait business full-time in 2009 that proved to be a good decision. During wedding season, she's booked most weekends, so to keep up with her growing business, she added two other photographers to her team. In addition to taking photos, she teaches a wedding <coughs> photography workshop and started a wedding vendor group. You'll find her work in national magazines, too. When she's not doing photography, she volunteers for groups like the Day of Dreams Foundation and the Walk to Ann Alzheimer's. Catherine achieves success by being able to see the big picture and working until her concept is fully developed. And I think she was able to join us today, right? Okay, congratulations. <laughs> and Jane Elizabeth Beth Stubbs, mm -hmm. pharmacist and partner of Kilgore's Pharmacy. Kilgore's Pharmacy, Laughter, and Beth Stubbs are their best medicines. Beth specializes in compounding medicine, which means that she's licensed to make certain medicines from scratch, a service not available everywhere. The Kilgore team attributes much of their growth to Beth's specialty. After becoming a junior partner, she took, an took on additional responsibilities like overseeing the Human Resources Department and 135 employees. 
Outside of work, she volunteers at her alma mater with the Boys and Girls Club and other worthy local organizations. Whatever she's doing to help, she does it with a smile. Congratulations.
that stay standing because if you have contributed a dollar to the food bank, if you have participated in a food drive, if you have um, spent time in our volunteer room repackaging food, if you have done anything to help support people who are struggling with food insecurity in this community, would you please wave your hand? Guys, that is the example of what teamwork can do. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for the food bank and, and for me. And now for our third 2017 award presentation for Business Woman of the Year. Damn. This honoree mixes things up every day and both her business and partners and customers are glad she does. She was given the extra responsibility of overseeing 135 employees. Of course, but she does compounding medicines, provides a cure for many, and a service not available from all pharmacies. Kilgore's Pharmacy is lucky to have her um, part of their team, and we're proud to be presenting the 2017 Businesswoman of the Year Award to Beth Stubbs. <laughs> Please consider nominating your own most admired woman in our business community next year so that we may include her among our highest achievers and best role models at the 2018 Columbia Daily Tribune Women in Business Awards Luncheon, which will be our 10th anniversary. I would like to close with a bit of wisdom shared by Ann Sweeney when she was with Walt Disney. She said, define success on your own terms, achieve it by your own rules, and build a life you're proud to live. As you leave today, please be sure to pick up one of the Women in Business swag bags sponsored by Commerce Bank with gifts from many of our sponsors and other local businesses, as well as an advanced copy of today's Women in Business special section that will also appear in tomorrow's tribune. Beth Lindsay and Andrea, please return to the stage for a few additional photos, and thank you everyone. Have a good afternoon.